Hi, I'm Cori Barger, and this is Bassoon Lessons Online. My goal is to help you play the bassoon with confidence and ease. Hit subscribe so that you don't miss any lessons. Today I want to talk to you about different articulations. When we play the bassoon, it's one of those instruments that's not always noticed, and one of the ways that we can help ourselves stand out is by making sure that we are actually being a little more obvious about whatever it is we're trying to do. When you're playing an accent, for example, you want to make sure that you have clearly defined the articulation, meaning the beginning of the note, the decay of the accent, and the end of the note. Are you going to have a little bit of silence at the end of the accent? I would recommend this, especially if you have repeated accents, so just so that you can really hear the difference between the next note and the note that came before. You can standardize these types of things for yourself, particularly by describing what it is that you want. Remember, one of the things that I am teaching a lot is making sure that you can describe what it is that you want to change, because if you don't know how to communicate that, it's often harder to change it. So, I have three requirements from an accent. It has a pretty aggressive tongue, it's louder than the notes around it, and it has a decay. And the decay implies that there will be a little bit of silence before the next note begins. So when you're practicing this, you want to try to have it happen as consistently as possible every time. Here's four notes without an accent. That's kind of just what I would call my standard articulation. Now I'll do it with four accents. I've created an extra burst of air so that the note will be louder at the beginning. And I definitely use a lot of strength from my abdominal muscles to make this happen. It's kind of like an explosion. Some notes will fight you on this, especially G and maybe even B flat, depending upon your read. You might get this noise where it's like the bassoon is kind of barking at you. Like that. So one of the one of the reasons that that happens is that the reed doesn't really have enough space to vibrate in the way that it needs to. If you open your mouth a little bit, it should solve that problem. You can see that I make a little bit of movement with my jaw so that I can give the space to the reed at, the, at that time when the extra air is going through. You want to create as much stability as you can with these sounds, so make sure that you're using your tuner and that you're listening. A lot of times I find that when people are using a tuner, they're not really opening their ears very much, so make sure that you don't fall into that trap. The tuner is a really useful tool, but it's only helping us to achieve what we need to achieve later, which is really listening and responding to what we hear. So whenever I'm playing different types of accents, I always make sure that I have decided what it is that's going to be different about them. So a tenuto accent will have a more gentle articulation. The tongue will be softer. Um, and by this, I mean that the way that I touch the reed will be different. My tongue will stay on the reed for less time and it will create less of a gap between one note and the other. Another thing that's important about tenuto notes is that the volume of the note stays the same from the beginning of the note to the end. You're not really going to have much of a taper on the note. So the end of the note is going to be the same volume and the same intensity as the beginning of the note will. If you play notes without tenuto, sometimes we create a little bit of phrasing to make sure that they are distinguishable from each other. So here's four tenuto notes. <laughs> smooth, very consistent. If you practice this in a scale pattern, you'll be able to hear any sort of pitch discrepancies and tone discrepancies too. So establish what you mean by these different articulations and you can come up with your own way of playing them. And if you're consistent about it and obvious about it, other people will hear it too. A lot of times we make articulations that only really we can hear. So remember that whatever it is that you're doing has to come from you, get translated through your air, through the reed, through the bassoon, 
through the room that you're playing in. If you're recording through the recording device, for me right now, across the internet, into your home, wherever it is you are, through the speakers on your device, into your ears. And if you can't understand that, then I may as well have played no accent at all. If you're in a concert hall, you have to play as though the people in the back can hear just as clearly as the people sitting next to you on stage. And a lot of times this is going to mean that whatever you're playing to you immediately is going to sound a lot more obvious than you want it to. Don't be afraid of being obvious. Usually, that's what we need. Hit subscribe so that you can hear about new videos whenever they come out, and give me a comment to let me know what other topics you would like to be covered in this series. I would really love to help you play with more confidence and ease, so if there's anything that you're struggling with, let me know and we can work on it together. Thank you!